Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Almost started a little late because Dash started growling at an unknown thing. You never know. You never know. I think he's going down right now. So welcome to our night prayer for this Saturday. It is May the 9th. May the 9th, Saturday, May the 9th, and tomorrow we will be celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter. The prayers I'm using tonight, I am adapting from this resource, and I know it'll be backwards, but this is Eucharistic Prayers by Sam Wells and Abigail Kocher, or Coker, actually, I think her name is pronounced. Um, I was delighted to meet her once. She actually came to Holy Comforter um, to our story time service. And that was a huge pleasure to meet her and her children. And I love this book. These are not Eucharistic prayers approved for use in the Episcopal Church, but they're very much like prayers we might use. <laughs> what I'm going to do is rather than doing the whole of any one of them is to use pieces of last Sunday's, well, oh, oh, and here's the neat thing, okay, if you're new to this resource, they have written Eucharistic prayers for every single Sunday in the three-year cycle, so that's why it's a really cool resource. If anyone with power out there is listening, I wish we could somehow use some of it or work with them to, to have these as prayers we could use in the Episcopal Church. Anyway, um, so these are Eucharistic prayers. So what I'm doing is I'm taking pieces of them to create a prayer service for us tonight. Uh, and I'm going to begin with last Sunday's prayer. And you'll remember the focus for the fourth Sunday of Easter is the Good Shepherd. That is what we were focusing on last week. Actually, Jesus was the gate, but we had Psalm 23, and so we kind of wrapped it all together. And Dash is now climbing on things like a chair with stuff on it. <laughs> all of you with children out there trying to work from home, you know what I'm talking about. This is not quite the same, but we might have a little interruption. Here we go. He's back. He's back. All right. So let's have a, a moment of silence and then I'll begin and I'm going to allow time for you to say some prayers in there as well. Okay. Let us pray. Shepherding God, we praise and thank you because you gather your flock around Abraham and through Moses and Joshua, you bring your sheep to a place of safety. I'm going to pause after some of these phrases, sentences, and allow for a little prayer. For example, I give thanks to God for safety. Um, and even when things are not so safe in the world, knowing that we are safe in you, O oh Lord, always held by you. In Jesus, you came to us as a Passover lamb to take away the sins of the world. And we give thanks to you, O oh God, for the ways that you work with us to overcome the sin of the world and to bring new life out of what is chaos, what is not good. And we give thanks for forgiveness and pray to be forgiving people ourselves. As our everlasting Good Shepherd, you promise that those who hear your voice shall never be in want. For you know your sheep by name, and you call us your own, to give to each of us a place in the sheepfold of your kingdom, where angels and archangels and all the company of heaven sing your unending praise. And we join with them, O oh God, in this, this time and this day and every day to give you praise and to thank you 
for your love. So here in the prayer, in the Eucharistic prayer, then it goes into the Sanctus, Holy, 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 and then it goes on a bit, and then there's the, um, what we call the Memorial Acclamation, and this is how it's done in this book. Um, the presider, person leading, says, Great is the mystery of faith. And then we respond, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. I love that. Great is the mystery of faith. How true, right? And then it concludes this Eucharistic prayer with these words. Saving God, your rod and your staff, comfort all, to look, all who look to you in faith. Search out your sheep that are lost and bring them home. When you find them in the valley of fear, gather them in your arms. When they face evil in the presence of enemies, follow them with your goodness and mercy all the days of their life. On that day when the shadow of death covers them, bring them to dwell in your house forever. Shepherd us with all your saints of every age into your glorious presence, where we shall behold your Lamb in seated glory, most holy Trinity, now and always. Amen. And we take this time to pray for those who have died, those we know, those we don't know, all who've died from COVID-19, all those who've died for other reasons, and we pray for their friends and families and those who are grieving. What I'll read now, or pray with you with, are parts of the Eucharistic prayer for tomorrow, for the fifth Sunday of Easter year A. We rejoice to give you thanks and praise, God of love. Because you called us to exist in your image, you filled the earth with wonder and beauty and life. And you made the children of Abraham your covenant people. You made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, your own people. And in the death and resurrection of Jesus, you showed us the way, the truth, and the life. Once we were not a people, but now we are your people. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending praise. And then again, that's where the Sanctus comes in. There's a little more. And then it concludes this way. Glorious God, you promise that those who believe in you will do greater things than these. Bestow upon your church the gifts of your spirit, that your people may, may be with the hungry, do beautiful things, show grace amid hostility, witness to your story, and behold your glory. Make us living stones and build us into a spiritual house that we may be your holy priesthood and that all creation, suffering and flourishing, faithful and fallen, may be suffused with your glory and may overflow with your praise. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. Hmm, right? This is nice. These are great prayers. I really recommend this resource to you. Um, I think it's only available in hard copy at this time. I haven't checked recently. But these are great prayers for personal devotion. 
especially at a time when we can't actually celebrate the Eucharist together, I'm finding these to be very supportive and, I don't know, you know, kind of bring me into the, the atmosphere of the Eucharist with beautiful words and images. And so I'm glad I could share them with you tonight. I'm going to have a little more silence and I might say a few more prayers um, and feel free to continue to say prayers and type in prayers if you'd like. Um, someone asked that I allow a little more time after we're sort of done just to be. So I'm going to do that as well tonight. Thank you for praying with me. We give thanks for this day, O oh Lord, for the blessings that we have received. We pray for your strength and your help in dealing with all that we're dealing with right now. I also pray especially for those who have lost their jobs, so many people, that they may receive the checks they're waiting for, that they may be supported and helped and that as a society, we might learn how to better care for all. We give thanks for all those who've been keeping our society together, those who work in stores, grocery stores, pharmacies, sanitation workers, people in so many jobs that often have gone um, you know, without a lot of praise. And so thank you for them. And thank you also for the nurses and the doctors and all the healthcare workers and everyone who works in a healthcare setting, a hospital or a clinic or another sort of place. Thank you for their devotion. Thank you for all the teachers who have continued to teach um, the children, our children, teachers who've done so much um, to support children during this time, above and beyond what anyone probably ever thought they would do or have to do or want to do. Um, driving around neighborhoods, honking horns, sharing so much of themselves. Mm. I don't think I introduced myself tonight. I am Hillary Smith. And I'm coming to you on behalf of all the members and friends of Holy Comforter and Episcopal Church in the Diocese of Virginia in Richmond, Virginia. And we are all glad to be able to offer these services as our, our gift, um, not only for our own members, but for all of us, all of you who are watching. And thank you for being part of this online experience, this online community. We are here for each other. And so this concludes what I will be saying tonight. I'm going to allow a little time, a little silence for you to just be um, so that we don't end too quickly.